I seem to be finding myself in really precarious situations all the time. And this is Valentina Kerman, and where is she going? Oh, okay. She's falling back to... Kerman. Welcome, guys. And... Today we're going to be talking about uh, Valentina Tereshkova and we're also going to be trying to finalize this challenge that started over the weekend to launch a rocket from an, uh, from a regular airplane I guess. So this is my machine and I just changed, changed it a little bit, I added air brakes because we're going to EVE, I brought, um, I finally brought batteries, not batteries, but uh, solar panels, I have a scientific barometer here to measure pressure and also an antenna and I had to lift my engines a little bit because this way I align my center of mass with center of thrust which was actually my problem when I was twitching and so just watch the launch and uh, let's actually start by introducing Valentina Tereshkova. So Valentina Kerman is based on Valentina Tereshkova who was the first uh, astronaut, female astronaut um, and she was you know she was one of the probably one of the greatest, greatest uh, female astronauts as well because not only was she uh, a really tough lady, but she oh, actually I shouldn't use past tense. She's still alive. She's still kicking. She's actually really 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 awesome and um, She was also the or she is uh, She was the youngest astronaut uh, Female astronaut in space. She was only 26 when in 1963 uh, I think it was June 14th actually she uh, Or they, they used um, uh, this capsule right here called Vostok 6 uh, to launch her into space for three days. She was in space for three whole days. She orbited the Earth 48 times and uh, She basically uh, spent so much time in space that oh wait, this is the coolest part. Look at that Look at how beautifully it was separated not a scratch in the machine so This is when we use the second stage to orbit uh, to get into orbit and then circular as our orbit and um, so yeah, she was the first woman to have flown in space and she she was actually selected amongst 400 applicants So she basically was, was able to defeat all of them um, But the thing is to order the uh, the astronauts uh, I guess it's called cosmonaut core She actually had to become a Soviet Air Force pilot But there was no female Soviet Air Force pilots at that time So she had to kind of like on accept an honorary position without really flying any airplanes um, and uh, she was amongst five selected members and she uh, five really qualified selected members who were still uh, considered to be cosmonauts but they never really got to fly in space unfortunately she was the only female from her group to fly in space um, now interesting thing about her is that uh, she actually started school at the age of eight so a little bit later than other kids but in 1953 uh, about eight years after she started school she actually quit she quit school I think I guess she, it was grade eight when she quit school, and she had to finish her courses. Uh, you could, I guess, you could call it homeschooling style. Uh, but she, yeah, she actually had to finish her school while working at a textile factory. She was um, very. She lived a li very simple life. She was, uh, you know, making clothes. Her family was very poor. Her dad was actually uh, dead because um, he died in the Finnish war when the Soviets invaded Finland. And um, he was technically a Soviet hero, but and that was actually one of the reasons why she was chosen because her dad was a Soviet hero. But at the same time, you know, her li early life was pretty difficult. So here we go with the separation. I had to turn on the engine, and this is when I circularize my orbit, uh, or about to circularize my orbit. So we're gonna release the last stage and then uh, propel ourselves into circular orbit. Um, so yeah, she was. Uh, she, uh, she had a very difficult life, she, uh, and for a person of you know her stature, she was actually relatively short, uh, which is also actually one of the reasons why she got chosen. Because to be an astronaut, not only do you have to be strong or tough, but you also have to be very short. Because capsules, even today, um, are relatively cramped. If you're a tall person, you're probably never going to become an astronaut. Which is one of the professions, actually even for um, for military pilots, you have to be relatively short uh, because, uh, because of the size of the capsule, really. Or the cabin, that is not a capsule. And so, um, yes, she, she was really considered to be worthy of an astronaut for diff a different sort of things that made her miserable in early life. You know, being short, being... Uh, been relatively poor, and uh, in, in actually in Soviet Union it is, used to be known as a pro proletarian background, which means that you have a very simple life and you're from a simple family, and sh she managed to achieve all this greatness uh, uh, really because of it and also uh, despite of all of the challenges. 
Now here, uh, I'm just going to show you how um, I plan my uh, course to EVE, or actually I'm not going to skip the planning part, but basically this is where we're going to be uh, going to EVE, this is the uh, air brakes, I just wanted to test them. And the thing is, the funny thing about air brakes is that they were actually kind of useless for this mission, but you'll find out why in a second. Uh, so I, I decided to do a few EVAs as well. Unfortunately, she wasn't the first uh, EVA person, she never got to go outside of the capsule. Uh, the first person to do, an, uh, or sorry, not the first person, but the first female to do an EVA was someone completely different. Her name was actually Svetlana... Oh, well, let me let me try to remember her family name. I totally forgot what her family name was. Um, oh, Svetlana Savitska, that's, that's right. I just had to look it up really quickly. And uh, she, she was the second female in space, and she was actually Svetlana Savitska. She was the, um, the first female EVA person. But that was 19 years later. This was actually in the early 80s that she got to do it. So in between Tereshkova's flight and Savitska's flight, there has not been a single female astronaut. So NASA really didn't even bother to beat the Soviets in, in this uh, space race to try to launch their own female astronaut. They decided to kind of just skip it. And their first female astronaut was only launched in the early 80s after Savitska. So it's kind of interesting that NASA just decided to not even bother with female astronauts. Uh, but anyway, so back to Tereshkova, so uh, when she launched to space, she even had a, a cool name, kind of a nickname, and that was Chaika, which is, uh, Chaika means a seagull in Russian, so that was sort of like her nickname um, after the flight, and she even has an, um, an asteroid named after her, uh, her call sign, so there's actually an astronaut, um, an as a space object, uh, an asteroid somewhere in space called Chaika. Um, and, uh, oh, here we go, this is the launch to EVE, I, I did use uh, MegJab to plan this, I didn't use it to launch, but I just used it to plan, because it was very difficult to record and to alt and tab uh, into my browser just to plan, um, plan this manually, so I decided to kind of just use MegJab, because it was a little bit more convenient, uh, even though it was originally supposed to be a very manual mission, I wasn't really going to use any kind of a launching thingamajigs. Um, and this is a voice of a female astronaut, just how convenient. And uh, Tereshkova, like I said, she, sp she spent three days orbiting Earth, it was 48 times that she flew around Earth, uh, and the interesting thing about it is that it didn't actually impress the Soviet um, ground, ground control, because according to them, she was a little bit too sick, and I, I would even say they, they kind of claim that she was too weak for the mission. Uh, well, the, it's possible that it was actually due to her age. She was only 26. It was a little bit too young for, for you know, in terms of astronauts' age. Uh, even even by today's standards, most astronauts are a little bit older than that. So she got very nauseous. She even might have, even though it's unofficial, but she might have puked in space. Um, but she wouldn't be the first to do that. There was actually someone else to have experienced what's today known as a space sickness. And this is actually going to be one of the future topics we're going to talk about space sickness, because that's a thing. Just like sea sickness, space sickness, space sickness is a thing. So here's uh, us approaching Eve, and this is actually where I get to uh, make a few mistakes. And let's just watch what happens. Uh, I decided to try to approach with the pre absence of about 70 something kilometers, 72 or 73. And. Um, this was for me to use uh, air braking in my air brakes that I brought with me to try to get into orbit. And let's let's see how this goes. Um, and actually, it doesn't go well. But I, I did retry this a few times. I had I saved my game right before this just to, so I can because I knew I was going to make a mistake. So there you go. And um, so yeah, uh, uh, Tereshkova actually did. Um, get sick in space and did not impress the ground control. And the name I was about to say, Ponomarova, this is actually someone else. Valentina Ponomarova is one of her uh, replacement astronauts who actually was supposed to be launched with Tereshkova at the same time. There's actually a dual launch of Vostok 5 and Vostok 6, and the second pilot was also supposed to be female, and it was supposed to be a, a lady by the name Valentina Ponomarova. They're actually really good friends, but unfortunately what happened was during the conference, where astronauts usually used to have conferences right before the flight, uh, during the conference, Ponomarova unfortunately decided to be a little bit too feminist for Soviet tastes, and also did not uh, promote Soviet Union enough, and so they decided to sack her. They, not, not to sack her, but they decided to replace her with a male astronaut instead. 
So there could have been two female astronauts, but instead there was only one, Tereshkova. So here's me using air brakes, and guess what? I This was my first time on EVE with air brakes, and it just so happens that they're completely useless on EVE, because just watch what happens. We're, we're already in the atmosphere, we're at 90 kilometers, and after you get to a slightly lower uh, atmospheric pressure on EVE, right away they start overheating, and they really are not useful for anything uh, on EVE at least. I, I think on Kerbin it might be a little bit more useful, but on EVE they essentially just over um, overheat and explode, which is something that you'll see in a second. I'm gonna lose my first air brake right about now, and I'm going to lose my second one later. So that was a very unsuccessful first attempt. Unfortunately, I didn't slow down enough. And uh, even though I was going uh, relatively low, this was what, 75 kilometers above EVE, um, I ended up just flying past it. So that was not really good. So I had to actually rely on, uh, on my engine, unfortunately. I had to use up some fuel to slow down. So uh, don't bring air brakes to EVE. It's just not very useful, even though they're so pretty. But here's my other attempts. I decided to go sideways. That didn't work uh, because why would it? I then decided to go straight forward because maybe I thought maybe this is how air brakes are supposed to work on EVE at least and guess what yeah that was a mistake too because uh, you really shouldn't be going straight uh, toward a planet like this, this uh, your heat shields on, on the other side so didn't survive very long in going this way either unfortunately and here's the explosion and then the lastly I think it was my fourth attempt maybe fifth attempt I just decided to, you know what, I'm just gonna use the engine. Uh, I still had enough fuel to uh, return back home. Here's me losing my air brakes, which I didn't even use for this particular uh, descent. Um, and I just decided to blast my engine and see if I can circularize, or at least get into any kind of orbit that way, because that was one of the challenges, get into orbit another uh, around another planet, and this is how I kind of did it. Here we go. And uh, didn't really use that, use up that much fuel, used up a little bit and got into orbit. Alright, so back to Tereshkova, and here's me getting into orbit. And so Tereshkova was a cool lady, she was really tough, she was really strong, she was uh, an amazing person, and she inspired lots and lots of girls. It's actually kind of interesting, it's kind of an interesting fact that after her flight, her, um, after her flight, uh, flight in space, her name, which was actually not very common in Eastern Europe, became really popular. Uh, just like the name Yuri became really popular after Yuri Gagarin, uh, the name Valentina became very popular as well. It even became popular in places like Cuba. Here's actually a stamp from Cuba commemorating her flight, because Cuba was, uh, you know, one of the closest allies of Soviet Union. And she, uh, oh, here we go. I'm gonna use my barometric pressure majiggy to to actually measure some pressure here. And this is how I decided to complete that challenge. Um, so I got some extra points for this. And so yeah, so Valentina Tereshkova, uh, or the name Valentina, became very popular in Cuba as well. So it's uh, if you ever meet someone from um, a Latin de Latin descent and her, her name is Valentina, it's probably because uh, her parents, or maybe her grand grandparents, actually wanted to name her after Valentina Tereshkova. And um, so the thing that is pretty awesome about her is that she she didn't just give up after the flight. It's, even though she never really flew in space again, she actually became a very, very active politician. She joined the Soviet um, Communist Party, she uh, became very active, and she's actually been active ever since. Uh, since 1969 until today, she's actually she was a, uh, she's been a politician and even today she's part of the the Russian um, ministry in a sense it's called Duma and she's a, a representative of a communist party there so in a sense she still is quite a prominent lady she's still quite well known and she even um, in, in 2014 uh, she even carried the Olympic flag uh, during the opening ceremony for the Olympics. Now here's me doing the EVA because I just like doing EVAs and just exploring space. I actually wanted to see if I can retrieve my antenna remotely uh, just to, so I can transmit stuff. And here's a selfie with Eve and <laughs> look how happy she is. Uh, it's actually interesting because in the game she has the traits of badass which means that 
in the most peculiar situations when other people would be crying and asking for their mommy, she usually just laughs and she loves this stuff. So this is me advancing time because I circularized my orbit around Eve and was going to return back to home, um, back home to Kerbin. Uh, so this is our advancing times and actually this mission took four years to complete. Uh, so this is us going back, propelling our engines and the view from inside the capsule. Um, and the thing about Valentina Tereshkova is that she's just, uh, she's so epic that in 2013 when when people started talking about mission to Mars, a one-way trip mission to Mars that means, you know, suicide sort of thing, that you basically, you're never coming back home. She's like, yeah, pick me, I'll do it. I'm old, but I'm still tough and I'll totally do it. Uh, and she's pretty old right now and she doesn't really care. She, if you ever see her picture, this is actually her, one of her recent pictures. Look at that lady. Look at how awesome she looks for her age. She was born in 1937. Do the math. I don't know when you're watching this video, but do the math. Uh, so she's definitely old, but awesome. Um, and I think actually one of the reasons why she never got to fly again was probably because she experienced so much sick sickness and discomfort in those three days in space. Uh, the ground control was really not impressed with her. They basically kind of thought that maybe because of this, uh, female astronauts or young astronauts should not go to space. So there hasn't been many young or female astronauts for at least 20 years after that. So here's us returning to Kerbin and um, because I had no more air brakes left, I just had to use my engine again for both the slowdown and uh, to to basically just use it as a kind of air brake because engines usually have the highest heat resistance in this game, except for the um, the actual uh, the actual capsule where the astronauts are. And this is us approaching Kerbin, the beautiful, beautiful planet. And as you see here, I'm actually using volumetric clouds, which I just realized apparently work really well if if a uh, let's just say you're using version 1.04. If you actually use a beta version for Eve, which is um, enhanced visual, no, what is it called? E, e stands for what? I forgot. Enhanced visual effects. I think that's it. Um, that's a mod that you can use to make a uh, Kerbal Space Program a lot more beautiful. Look at how beautiful this is with the reflections and everything. And so yeah, if you use the beta version, not the not the mo uh, most. Um, oh yeah. I forgot to mention, this is where I always got lost in space. I totally lost my capsule for a while and I had to find it by flying around in space as I was crashing into, into the orbit. Uh, that was fun. Unfortunately, I didn't, I wasn't going to show you this because I almost failed the mission again, but it's kind of fun to, to, to actually have a success, success after all. Uh, this was actually only minutes before, uh, re-entry into orbit. And so, yeah, if you use the beta version of EVE, you'll be able to use volumetric clouds really well. It won't crash. It will be very stable because the modern, not the modern, but the most latest version for some reason crashes a lot and also is, doesn't even work sometimes. So uh, don't use one point whatever version. Use the beta version if you can get access to it. I actually have it saved from my old beta, so I just copy pasted the folder. And so here is Valentina Kerman based on Valentina Tereshkova returning back to Earth. I'm, I just, so like I said, I decided to use my engine to slow down. And here we're going to use up all our fuel and then uh, dump the last stage and use air braking for the rest of the trip. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention is that, like I said before, NASA actually did not have a female astronaut until the 80s, until after the second female astronaut from the Soviet Union. And that's kind of really interesting because I'm kind of really interested to find out. And if somebody knows, please post this in the comments below. Why do you think NASA never launched a female astronaut? Why was it only men um, going to space for, you know, for decades? And even the first man on the moon was the man, right? And the second man and the third man, they were all men. So they didn't really have female astronauts. So in that sense, it seems like uh, Soviet Union was a little bit more progressive and a little bit more... Uh, you know, accessible to women than than uh, than U.S. in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Because until the 80s, there were no female astronauts in NASA as well. So this is uh, basically the return, and it was relatively safe. The parachute was just enough for us to slow down at the end, and we crashed in the water. But you know what? It's a successful mission, return mission from Eve orbit, with a little bit of science. Even though this was a creative mode, um, so or sandbox mode, so I didn't really get any science per se, but uh, I did return with uh, barometric information from higher EVE atmosphere, uh, which was probably 
a very dangerous mission to begin with because with the, all of the additions in the new 1.04 uh, returns or not returns but uh, f flights through the EVE atmosphere became a little bit more dangerous it's a little bit easier to die and of course I had to do an, uh, my last EVA get some reports here and uh, we're gonna definitely try to um, return safely so we're gonna go back inside the capsule so this is a little bit of about uh, Valentina Tereshkova, uh, basically a lady who is pretty cool. I think you should definitely look her up if you didn't know anything about her. And she inspired generations of girls. She, uh, in the 60s and 70s, a lot of young girls, both from the Soviet Union and from other countries, were totally inspired by her. And I think it's kind of the important part of the story is that women like her inspired generations anyway so th really this is it uh, so here we are returning back to Kerbin and we're going to land re retrieve our capsule and I believe this is a pretty successful mission uh, if I may say so so my challenge has been finally complete I don't know if I got all of the points I think I missed a few like my plane didn't get to return so I lost some points there but other than that I think this is it and I'm going to stop this video here hopefully you guys enjoy this and let's do our last EVA by swimming around in the ocean on Kerbin, because why not? She's already epic, and she might as well go for a little swim, right? Yeah, nice and refreshing, especially after a year, four years in space. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. This has been What The Math. If you enjoyed the video, check out some of the other Kerbal Space Program, but also Universe Sunbox 2 videos. And if you have any recommendations, post them in the description, or oh, not description, but comments below. Thank you. Game you leader and bye bye to you.